just post them in the live chat. Mm -hmm. Jens, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you for the nice introduction. So this talks about the local testing of AWS serverless Lambda function functions. Um, they are yeah, awfully called that way, but in the talk I'll just refer to them as Lambdas because it's just a lot simpler. <laughs> so how did I come up with it, this topic? I've been working in, sorry, mouse, need over here. Uh, I've been working in microservice pro products before. And the, you got a clear like test strategy defined in there. And um, when I came to a cloud project for the first time, I've been missing this actually. And I did some investigation and um, Actually, we're not the only one having that gap. You can't feel really find a lot of information there how to test your lambdas. So, uh, I think manual deploying and testing is not an option. Uh, it just slows you down. And um, testing is about give, getting feedback and getting it fast. So I want to do it locally, and because uh, it just reduces my feedback cycles. And uh, that's also why we're going to focus on automatic testing in this talk. So as I said, I've been working in microservice projects before. Sorry? Uh, so I applied the testing strategy on Lambdas. And it actually turned out quite well. And uh, that's why I'm going to present uh, my results today. So a few slides about me. Thanks for the introduction, Garrett. Uh, but I still... Uh, talk about some words. Um, I'm a software engineer working for Open Value in Düsseldorf. Um, yeah, even though it sounds like I'm totally into testing, it's just partially true. I like when my software is well tested. So when I'm doing refactorings or stuff like this, uh, it just gives me gives me a sense of security, and I like this. So I already said a little about uh, what we're going to do. So first part is going to be um, the testing of microservices. We'll have, <coughs> have a look into that, how this is done. Um, afterwards, I'll explain what lambdas are and uh, give a little comparison between lambdas and classical microservices. And we'll actually see that lambdas are also kind of a microservices and may be used or can actually be used in a microservice architecture. Um, yeah, then we'll apply the testing strategy of uh, microservices to Lambdas. And I'll introduce a little yeah, example application where we do the testing. So first, uh, the testing of microservices. Here's an example of a small microservices, mi microservice, and it's implied that the service is structured using the ports and adapter pattern, which means all external dependencies uh, are connected to the, to the service layer through an adapter. Um, this makes it easy to test the service layer independently, also the domain logic. Um, yeah, one part is the REST adapter and uh, declares the endpoints and of the service and defines uh, how the service can be called and which values are actually returned. A data so the external adapters are just an example, so there may be a database uh, adapter which is used to read and write values to database. And we might actually want to connect to an external service, which gives us some information which we need to calculate something. So let's see how we structure our code to test this. We start with the smallest kind of test we know, it's unit testing. And depending on the framework we use, uh, we're able to test the REST adapter as a unit test. Oh, come on. There it is. So, uh, depends on your framework. So maybe you want to t you're just able to test it as an integration test. It's also fine, but yeah, just you'll get it, <laughs> I think. So also the same applies to the domain and the service layer. They are independently. They have no external uh, connections. Um, you can just uh, mock the the adopters and have a nice and clean unit test. So what follows up are the integration tests. And in integration tests are tests between external uh, components. And I want to test the integration of my uh, service to this external component. And in this example, I got a 
database as an external component and an external service. Um, for example, the database uh, may be tested using test containers or a memory store, and the external service might be mocked through something like um, wire mock, mock HTTP server, or a simple stop. Yes, so um, next step, it's actually the biggest step in microservices, the component test, and it's the test where we test the service as a whole. Um, there we also need to replace, like similar to the integration tests, our external dependencies. <clears throat> yes, and that's it. So if we sum it up, uh, we got a lot of nice colorful boxes in there. And we can see that all the elements are actually tested. Um, whenever it's possible, uh, things are tested in isolation. Um, all external dependencies are integration tested and we start up the component, uh, fire request on it in a comp component test. So we start, uh, we test the whole thing. Um, and what we can see here is in the test permit in action. So we probably get, a, we get, get like a few elements which are unit tested, which produce multiple unit tests. Uh, there are two different uh, external services, so two integration tests. And we got one component, so there's one component test. So if we structure the tests by their amount, we'll get something like this. And uh, yeah, just for the sake of uh, completeness, I also added end-to-end -end tests and manual testing. Um, due to the shortness of the task, uh, of the, the presentation, I'll not get into end-to-end -end testing, because it can get really complex in the microservice environment. Uh, it's just simply our scope for this talk. And what we actually want to do is reduce manual testing um, with our setup. Uh, there's still um, like possibilities to, and actually use cases where it makes sense to test your lambdas manually, but uh, also due to the time, I'll skip it for now. Which uh, brings us to what are lambdas actually? Um, lambdas are very small and simple functions. That gets, that gets executed when they're called. And we don't even need a, a web server to run them. Uh, AWS does it for us. Uh, we just have to implement an interface, implement an event handling method, and we can, yeah, just um, work on the inputs and outputs we get. Um, then we have to zip it. In our case, when we're working with Java, we create a JAR file, which is just another thing as a zip file, and upload it to AWS. Um, there are also other deployment methods which involve uh, YAML files and the handling of it. But uh, yeah, we want to do it locally, so deployment is uh, not that a big thing for us. Uh, yeah, next thing to know, lambdas are triggered by events. so. It can, they can be part of an event-driven architecture, if you want to. And uh, you can either define custom events, or you can use predefined AWS-specific events, like uh, a file upload to S3, which is the storage solution of AWS. Um, yeah, one nice thing about Lambdas is the automatic scaling, and uh, which means Run up, lambda functions only run when you need it. So uh, when a lambda is called, it might get started because there's been no load before. And when there's no load after, it might get, shut, might get shut down again. And this means when you're using lambdas in your architecture, you only pay what you consume. Um, yeah, and actually a nice side effect of, this, of it is that, the, that we cannot have any state in memory. So. We have to think about that. Each lambda we have and with we start might get shut down in the future. So we got the lambdas and let's compare lambdas to classic microservices. Um, in classic microservices, you can configure your web server. You don't have to when you're using embedded web servers, for example. But as soon as, as you want to get to, for example, for performance optimizations or things like this, you actually want to do this. 
Um, one big difference in lambdas and microservices is that lambdas can only have one endpoint. Uh, in microservices, it's actually common to have multiple ones, and most projects I've been in, that was actually the case. And uh, yeah, when having microservices, you usually do the scaling yourself. So you, you would usually deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster and define how the scaling works, what are the parameters for scaling, stuff like this. Um, things like statefulness are possible in microservices, when Lambda is a lot more difficult. Um, and microservices are, so this is more my experience, so in most projects I've been, microservices tend to grow over time. So at some point they might be micro and then they go like macro or big services, who knows. Um, with Lambda, this can't happen because they're like constrained through the framework. And yeah, to sum it up, Lambdas are quite similar to microservices, but physically constrained in their size. And a lot of things we can do, we have to do in microservices, um, we actually get this from the AWS framework. So now that we've seen that Lambdas and microservices are quite equal, uh, or that Lambdas can actually be microservices in microservice architecture, um, the testing should also be the same, or at least quite similar. And we can use the same tools. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, the most valuable tool we have for testing is dependency injection, uh, as it actually keeps, uh, it actually forces us to create testable code. And in a small service like Lambda, we don't even need a dependency injection framework. We can just do it manually. Um, I also gave some examples like test containers and Wiremark and there might be multiple else, <coughs> which we use for stubbing and mock mocking external services. And we also can use this in a, in a Lambda environment. Uh, the only thing that's difficult for us is testing AWS specific tools. Like uh, what if we want to um, connect to something like the simple storage solution S3 from AWS. Um, yeah, and there's like new kit on the block, a new tool, local stack, and yeah, it actually aims to start a local AWS environment for you, which you can use for local testing. And it's just perfect for testing purposes. So now that we've seen the tools, uh, I'm going to explain what use case we have. Uh, we got an entity, which might be user or another service, and the user has an image. And uh, I took just our company logo, because for a compliance reason, I just wanted to make sure that the cat picture I had before was not copyrighted. <laughs> uh, that's a lot easier. So the user has an image, and he wants to make a thumbnail of it. Uh, so he uploads the picture to the file storage, um, and then he tells our Lambda that he wants a thumbnail out of it. So he calls it and gives the Lambda the location of where to find the image. The Lambda then retrieves uh, the image, shrinks it, and puts it back on S3 uh, and responds to the user that, uh, or responds to the user where to find the image. The user can then just exit it and he has a thumbnail for itself. So let's check how we're doing it, how we're going to do it in code. Um, so as I said, you have to implement an event handler in Lambdas. And uh, this is the entry point for the Lambda. This is the method that gets called when we fire an, an event at the Lambda. So we have to implement the request handler interface. Oh, yeah, highlighting works now. Um, and the handle request method. And uh, this met method is executed as soon as the Lambda is called. And we're free to define inputs and outputs for the method. And uh, here we just use simple POJOS uh, to transmit the location of the file in S3. Uh, and actually, yeah, for the output, it's the same, but for the thumbnail. So I usually because this is AWS logic. 
I try to keep this method as small as possible. Um, I want to test my business log logic in isolation. Uh, it's what we saw in the microservices. So my domain logic, keep it apart from the rest, test it as unit tests, and yeah, test this in another way. Well, we'll see later. <laughs> um, you know, the only exception that we got here is the dependency injection going in, on in the uh, constructor. Here we define all our services we need in the, uh, to actually process the image. And uh, you can see, uh, this is actually manual dependency injection because we use, we just create services, injection and inject them in the, in the event handling service. And yeah, we're ready to go. Yeah. Yes. And uh, let's check how the input and the output looks. I already explained, it's just simple POJOs. Um, the input is the bucket and the key uh, of the image, and the output is the bucket and the key of the th thumbnail. And we're also returning a, a, like a direct link to the file, which allows like easier handling. We can download it right away, whatever we want. Um, I can't use the records here, actually, because uh, AWS doesn't support JDK 17 yet. So I still have to yeah, stick with JDK 11. Um, we saw that the event handling service was called. So let's look at this next. Um, this is what the Lambda calls after it was called. And uh, what it does, it retrieves a value from S3, from the storage server, resizes it with our image service, and just uploads it again to the storage server. And yeah. That's it. I left, yeah, I left out some code because there's some nasty uh, transformation between the image, input streams, output streams, and yeah, that's not like beautiful stuff in Java. So uh, I just don't want to show it. Um, there's source code online. Uh, it's on the background slides. So if you want to check it out, you can do it. <laughs> um, so. Let's get back to the services. We're using the S3 service and an image service over here. And we use the S3 service to upload and download files. And yeah, that's all it does. And the image service is what we use to create uh, to shrink files. And actually, we don't care about the implementation because we just want to test them. So that's what we're going to do now. Mm -hmm. Good. Duplicate and go into. Hope it works because I'm using IntelliJ in the Windows subsystem for Linux. It's still kind of buggy, but better than developing on Windows. So, this is the test for the image service. And all it does, all we do here is uh, yeah, use an image. Uh, resize it with our service and check that the dimensions are less or equal than the ones we predefined. And yeah, to show it and to test it manually for this presentation, I also outputted it to the target folder. So let's just run it and check how it looks in the end. Uh, so it's unit test, it's fast, and there's no external dependencies which we have to start up. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the tests I prefer, small and fast. Let's check. This was the actual image, 1,500 by 1,500 pixels, and the resulting image looks like this, 300 by 300. And yeah, it's shrinked. It's the maximum dimension we predefined, so this test seems to work. Uh, like one big chunk of our logic in lava in in our lambda is actually tested now. Let's go with the S3 service. Um, as we remember, S the S3 service is an external dependency. It's something from AWS that we have to call. Uh, like this. Uh, my screen si size is a little small, so I'll put this one away. Um, so S3 is an external dependency. So we have to use a stop or a mock or something to, to actually 
yeah, test our integration with it. And for this, we use test containers. Um, test containers um, fires up a Docker container and actually handles all the stuff we want to do with it. So before the test, it starts it. After the test, it stops it. It removes the container. All the, the life cycle of the container is managed by, by test containers. And we tell test, uh, the local stack test container to start up an S3 service, because that's our integration we want to connect against. For testing purposes, I implement my own S3 client here, because we want to uh, do some test setup. So if you want to download a file, there has to be a file online. And I don't want to use my existing logic, logic to depend on itself. So like I get like a cyclic dependency when testing. So I do like uploading file and receiving a file with, an, with another client. So I'm not dependent on my service implementation. Next part is the S3 service. Actually, that's what we want to test. And uh, usually it would connect against uh, the AWS cloud. But uh, we want to tell it to connect to local stack or local, uh, yeah, let, let's call it cloud. Um, we're giving it an endpoint overwrite. So it now, is, now it will now connect to a local instance. So let's check one interesting test that doesn't have some error case involved. And it's uh, yeah, like the receiving of an object. If you want to receive an object and download it, we have to create a bucket and a file first. And uh, yeah, actually create it in the S3 instance. Then we use our service to retrieve it. And we assert that the file is equal and the content in it actually as well. So let's run it. It should run a little fast, uh, a little slower than the unit test because we have to start up our external dependency, which is a Docker container. But still not that slow, maybe just five seconds or something. <clears throat> and there it is. We actually proved that our client can download um, files from S3. Let's check if it also can upload files. So we create a bucket to have something to store files in and uh, <coughs> create a simple file as a file stream and upload it using our S3 service. And yeah, in the end, we get, uh, yeah, um, we can, <laughs> sorry, in the end, we can download the file and actually check again that the file content is equal. So let's run it once again. Uh, also, test containers will start up the S3 instance here again. And yeah, we actually showed that we can put objects onto uh, the Amazon cloud. So I also created a component test, which is the one of the bigger tests we got here. And it's also a lot more complex. Um, it's also test containers test, but uh, we're not using not only using the S3 instance, we also we actually have to start up the Lambda. And starting up Lambda uh, is something that usually can be done in the AWS cloud, but we're going to do it locally. So we have to tell um, local stack that we also want to create a Lambda. And the Lambda and the storage solution want to talk to each other. So we have to create a network uh, on which they can talk. So we have to create a shared network with a network alias for local stack. Yeah, to actually have a name so they can communicate. Um, so when we start the container now, we got S3 running, but we have no Lambda yet. We actually have to create it. And we can do this using the AWS SDK. We have to define our env environment var variables over here, um, the runtime, and actually the method we want to execute when the Lambda is called. Then we define the zip file and the location of the zip file. And this is actually the tricky part, because what we're going to test here is not only the code, but the jar file. And this means this test has to be executed in another stage of the Maven lifecycle. Because usually in the test stage, there is no jar file. 
the package stage is later. So we can actually use, I think it's the Shortfire plugin and some nice uh, renaming of the, of the test to make sure that the test runs in the verify stage after the package stage. So that makes sure that there actually is a jar file we can upload and which we can fire requests to add. So let's have a look at the test. We create a bucket and we upload a file, like we've seen in this example uh, on the slides. And then we invoke the Lambda and we invoke it with the key, uh, with the bucket and the key where to find the, the, the image. And uh, this might look like this, because Lambdas usually get called with the JSON syntax, like any REST service, or like usual REST services. So after calling it this way, we expect that, uh, yeah, the, that we get an okay response, which is the HTTP status code 200. And we also assume that the image we get back is shrinked. So let's run it. Should be a little longer than the test we had before because there's two containers starting up. But we should see some nice log messages in there where we see how the, um, how the buckets are created, the lambda is started, oh, it's running, it says it's running here. And the test passed. Yeah, we should see somewhere over here uh, uh, that there is a response, status code 200. Uh, but there's, yeah. Uh, actually, the, the response is coming back as a byte array, so it has to be parsed, so we can see really see how it's looking in there. And uh, yeah, we tested it, but does it actually run in production? So let's let's check this. I um, deployed the lambda. This again. Somehow this is always kind of weird. Um, I deployed the lambda as a jar file to the AWS cloud. Oh, sorry, it might be a little small, right? And uh, I got an example JSON in here, which looks kind of similar to the one. Um, we had in the component test and I can just and it refers to a file in the bucket oh, forgot to clean up the, the thumbnail image over here uh, but yeah we'll see that it changes so I uploaded an image over here we refer to it uh, tell the lambda to shrink it let's fire this request uh, at the lambda and see what our or what the result actually is. Uh, this may take a few seconds because the Lambda is unused and Lambdas usually have like a cold start time because uh, it has to start up. Uh, when it's running, yeah, it's uh, able to process the request faster. Um, I didn't use it like in the past one hour, so it takes maybe a few seconds. So we get the response we defined, a bucket, a key, and a link to the file looks quite similar to uh, the POJO we defined just in the JSON syntax. And if we refresh it over here, this date should actually change. Oh yeah, it's 20 or eight. Let's compare the clock. It looks like it happened like just a few seconds ago. So what we did was verify, uh, we tested our Lambda. Oh, come on, close. <laughs> So we tested our Lambda. Uh, we actually proved that it's also running in the AWS cloud. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have now an overview how you are able to test your Lambdas. And uh, if you want to see a little more, uh, the slides can be found here. Uh, the code is also in a GitHub repo. And if you want to dive a little more into the testing of microservices, there's like a really great article of Martin Fowler about it. Uh, yeah, very detailed. Um, I stole a lot from him. <laughs> and yeah, thank you very much. And you're free to ask questions now. Um,
just if you don't come up with a question later, just write me an email. I'll answer it. Thanks, Jens. Uh, well, time for questions. Um, if any questions come here, please uh, repeat it for the people at home. Sure. Uh, I'll check the chat. Um, well, there's one uh, more comment in the chat. Um, it was uh, regarding the statefulness uh, of uh, of the lambdas. Yeah. Uh, and the suggestion was to theoretically uh, store the state in a S3. Uh, Totally possible, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, possibly not a good idea. Yeah. And, and the one uh, writing in the chat is actually here. Do you want to add something to it or uh, <laughs> just a smile? <laughs> okay. Any other questions maybe from here? Yes. One. In the beginning you said that uh, traditional microservices tend to have uh, multiple endpoints. I didn't get that exactly. So like on the Lambda, you have... The question uh, maybe you oh, yeah. So the question was that there, uh, that uh, traditional microservices tend to have multiple endpoints, and uh, so if you have, for example, a, a lambda and uh, not lambda, sorry, microservices, a microservice which does user management, uh, might have an endpoint for creating a user, updating a user, and deleting a user. In a lambda, you can't have that. You have to have three different lambdas for each endpoint. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Um, yeah, you told us something about uh, AWS lambdas, and uh, we know that um, um, yeah, there are some other uh, cloud uh, platforms, uh, uh, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, uh, and uh, Azure has Azure Functions, I think, and Google Cloud has Google Cloud Functions. Uh, can you use the same approach for that, or the so differences? I would say partly. Like uh, you can do like the uh, unit testing stuff. You can structure your code in the lambda. Uh, you can always do unit testing because you have no external dependencies. Um, but concerning like the, the external dependencies to the cloud itself um, might be kind of difficult because local stacks only working for AWS. Okay. Um, and I don't think there's like similar uh, tools in the Azure and Google world, but I'm not really sure about it. So okay. don't, don't hang on. It's fine. No, no, no. <laughs> we won't. We won't. <laughs> okay. Uh, just look at the chat if there's anything coming in. If not, then um, it's time for a short uh, bio break at home and here. Uh, you can take a short uh, break, uh, take something to drink maybe. And I would suggest that we uh, start again at uh, 2025. So uh, a bit more than 10 minutes break. And then uh, we uh, already are excited about the talk of uh, Sebastian. And for now, Jens, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you too. Right. <laughs>